Episode 27 He is here Mom has set the ball in motion and I decided to play along. This young man she talked about is named Michael. He is the son of one of her distant friends and according to her, he works as a doctor in one of the hospitals in Abuja. A well-to-do young man. I was tired after church service and when I got home, I went straight to bed. We had woken up in the early hours of 4 o'clock a.m. to cook three different delicacies, white rice, jollof rice, and swallow. A few minutes into my rest, my phone boosted with an incoming message wishing me a Merry Christmas. The number was new and my true caller hadn't provided the identity of the caller. I simply replied, thank you. I silenced the phone and concentrated on my sleep. I was asleep for what seems like less than an hour when mom tapped me awake. He is here, she said. He who? I asked, trying to understand what mom was saying. Michael, he is here to see you. I wasn't ready for this. Besides, I was tired and really not ready to chat with anyone. <clears throat> I took a long sigh. Okay, I will be out in a minute. Let me wash my face. Mom left joyously. Reluctantly, I went to the bathroom, washed my face and wore something decent and presentable. A nice Ankara dress I had worn earlier to church this morning. He was seated on one of the sofas in the living room. At first sight, I could say he is handsome, well built and had a light skin complexion. His head was bald, but he had a well trimmed beard that fit perfectly with his oval face. He wore a smile as I approached him. Good day, welcome to our house, I said politely as he rose for a handshake. I gracefully shook his hand and I offered him a seat. Mom had served him a plate of chinchin and some fried meat accompanied by a bottle of soft drink and a glass cup. Nice meeting you, Emanuela. You are indeed a beauty to behold. He complimented. Thank you. Um, so what... Pleasure do I own this visit, sir? Wow, <laughs> straight to the point, right? You are just what your mom described to you. He smiled. If only he knew how forced this conversation was, maybe he would help both parties speed up the process already. I kept looking at him intently, wanting him to state his purpose. I might have made him uncomfortable, but he never showed it. He must be a bold doctor. Yes, maybe you wait for something else out of context for my coming but i'm glad you want to hear it from the horse's mouth it's true i need a wife and i'm hopefully looking for a potential lady who could fit into that role but to be honest with you i desire a friend first before a wife he said calmly okay you got my attention so i asked I barely know you, but if my mom could sing your praises, I know you have potentials. But like I said, I am looking for a friend, and I don't know if you can be a friend to someone like me. Someone like you? Then tell me, who are you? Did I regret asking this question? No. But at the same time, I wish I never did. Why? This man right here is the man I long to have by my side. He possesses the quality I wanted in a man. In 20 minutes, I have assessed his intellect, charisma, mannerism, studied his expression, and could identify that he is one who fears the Lord. I could easily say he might be the psalmist I have been looking for elsewhere. But as I had always believed, time speaks. I approved his friendship and we started building it as friends. The first few days before New Year, we hung out a lot, studying ourselves and getting familiar with our personalities. We were just friends, and for a long while, I found myself bonding yet again, possibly falling in love with a stranger. On New Year's Day, after church service, I had an unexpected call. 
it was Oliver. I felt like avoiding him, but then I realized we didn't have any sort of romantic relationship for him to owe me an apology or even an explanation. Hello, Ella. He called when I received the call. I was with Michael. We went out for his friend's birthday celebration at Dam site. It was like an outdoor get together. I am fine, sir. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Wow, Ella, we've gone back to the resetting mood, Abby. He teased jerkily. I'm so sorry. I didn't call to check up on you all this while. I had a meeting that was called for in London and I left my phone back in Lagos. I left that same Friday you told me you were leaving. I know I should have said something. I really don't understand why he was apologizing. He is my boss for Christ's sake. But then I realized that was one quality I love about him, his humility. It's okay sir, I understand you quite well and if you are feeling guilty, just send me my Christmas present and I'll forgive you. I said jerkily. Well, thank God I came with it. He said, came with it? I asked baffled. Yes, I'm presently at your residence. My residence? A Lagos or? Zuru, sit there with your mom staring directly at me. I finally heard mom speak. Hello! <laughs> You didn't tell me a celebrity is coming to our house. What kind of a child are you? She questioned in our dialect. I couldn't believe what I just heard. My screen caught the attention of everyone there as Michael rushed to me. Are you okay? He asked, concerned. Yes. Take me home, please. I pleaded. Oh, okay. He said without further questions, sensing my excitement. He is here. I couldn't stop smiling as I saw Luquized. <laughs>